Welcome to Discipling Nations with Pastor Ryan Briggio. Pastor Ryan's heart is to empower you and your family to walk in the power and blessings of God. Your life will be forever changed. Now, here's Pastor Ryan. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Discipling Nations. I'm Pastor Ryan Briggio, and today I want to speak to you about love. You know, love is a powerful thing. People do almost anything for the sake of love and to feel loved. You know, I've heard of stories of people walking for miles and miles or riding their bike for miles and miles to see their girlfriends. And to them, it didn't feel like a sacrifice because there was nothing they would rather do than go see their girlfriend. Or someone driving from New Brunswick, Canada, me, to Rochester, New York, 17 hours each way, to see my now wife was my girlfriend then for a weekend. You know, love can make us do all kinds of crazy things. I remember when Holly and I were first dating, I was invited to her home for Christmas. And I was a little nervous. I think they were a little nervous meeting me because they were concerned I might be the one. She was still young and they, anyway, but we went to their house and uh, I was first time meeting her parents. I was very nervous. So I flew into Ottawa on Christmas day And her family was like 45 minutes late picking me up at the airport. I think I was the only person in there other than some workers. And I felt like they were not very excited about this trip. They weren't as excited as I was about this trip. And I think they were nervous about meeting me. And so uh, her dad picked me up with uh, Holly in the van and also her brother and sister. Her mother stayed home to do some things. But anyway, they picked me up at the airport. It was about an hour and a half ride from the airport back to their farm. And the whole way back, her little brother, Jonathan, who was probably eight or nine at the time, he was just drilling me with questions. And I I think her dad probably put him up to these questions. But anyway, he still hasn't ever admitted to that, but that's what I think happened. But anyway, he asked me questions like, have you ever had a girlfriend before? Have you ever kissed a girl before? Have you ever smoked a cigarette before? Have you ever had alcohol before? Have you ever done drugs before? And all these kind of questions just kept asking me one after another, after another, after another. And I answered him honestly. And you know, Holly was holding onto my arm, sitting beside me in the van. And she just sat there smiling and giggling the whole time at all his questions. And after a while, I was poked Holly and said, are you going to make him stop soon? I mean, he's been drilling me for these questions for a long time. But anyway, eventually we made it to the farm and The plan was for me to stay just a few days and my brother was driving to come visit with his wife and daughter from Indiana coming there to meet me, spend the night one night and then pick me up and take me back home to New Brunswick. But when they arrived to Holly's place, my brother and their their car had a flat tire. The tire was absolutely ruined and they didn't even notice it and realize it and the repair shops were all closed for the holidays. And by the time the tire shop was open, they were able to order him a new tire for that car. It was installed. It was too late for my brother to go back home to see my parents, take me home and see my parents. And so he had to stay there with his family, with me for a few days, and then he just would go back to Indiana. Now, I told my brother during this visit, now, you need to be on your best behavior because this girl could be the one. I could be marrying this girl, so you need to be on your best behavior. Don't embarrass me. You know, be good. But at the dinner table that evening, I mean, this was a nightmare. The dinner table that evening, my brother told them every embarrassing story I ever had. And uh, he told them about me wetting the bed when I was a little kid. He told them about, I don't even remember what else, all these different embarrassing stories. I felt like sliding under the table. I just felt so embarrassed. And then it was New Year's Eve, and uh, Holly and I invited some friends over to hang out with us and watch a movie. And my brother picked out the movie called Son-in-Law. I didn't even make the connection. I wasn't really paying attention to the movie he picked out. And he was, I, I, I thought about it later, but he picked a movie Son-in-Law trying to say to, to her, her Holly's dad, Bill, this is your new son-in-law talking about me. So anyway, so Holly's parents decided to watch the movie with us. And this made me nervous because I hadn't seen the movie before. And I was kind of nervous this movie might not be a, a, an appropriate movie, might not be a good movie. Uh, but my brother told uh, my now in-laws, told them that I picked out the movie and that it was called Son-in-Law. And he told them that laughing. I mean, it just, I didn't even know that till later. But anyway, it was embarrassing. But in the very first scene in this movie, the father kisses his daughter goodnight and leaves the room. Then she climbs out the window 
uh, to meet up at the bar with her boyfriend to kiss and make out with her boyfriend. And her dad just looked at me and started staring at me and I was like feeling all nervous like, oh man, he's just staring at me. And I pretended like, like I didn't notice. And there was other scenes in the movie that were not good. I didn't approve of this movie either, but I was nervous and didn't say anything. I was scared. But her dad just kept staring at me. And after a while, I was pretending not to notice, but I definitely noticed. And finally, he had enough. The movie was not a good movie. And he looked at me and he said, you would let my daughter watch this movie? You know, I felt like I was about an inch tall. I felt so bad and so embarrassed. I didn't even answer. I was speechless. I was so upset with my brother. I felt like he was ruining everything. I got up from my chair, went up to the room I was staying in and crawled in my bed. I started to cry. I was so angry with my brother. I told him this was important to me. I told him this could be the one. Don't ruin this for me. Be, be good. And he was doing all these things, joking around, thinking it was all funny. I didn't think it was very funny. The next day, my brother and his family left uh, for their home for Indiana, and I found a ticket to fly back to my home in New Brunswick. And I loaded my suitcase, put it in the van, and I said, come on, Holly, let's get in the van. It's time to go to the airport. And she was like, I can't go. Dad said, I have to stay home. He wants to talk to you. I'm like, oh my goodness. It's an hour and a half ride. He wants to talk to me. I begged her, please come with us. It's an hour and a half ride. Please come with me. I need you to be there. Talk to me. He goes, and she said, I can't. So the whole ride there, about an hour and a half, he's drilling me on questions about dating and how far is too far when you're dating and all these things about kissing, dating, goodbye, different books he was recommending, things like that. And I remember him saying, if I were to give you a million dollars, what would you do with it? And I said, I'd pay off some bills. I'd probably, I would tithe. I'd probably make a few investments, maybe purchase a home, things like that. And I thought maybe he's trying to buy me off here so I wouldn't come back to his home. It was such a bad visit. But anyway, he said, uh, then he said to me, you would take care of this money, right? I said, yeah, I would take care of it. Then he said, right now, you have been given something, or at least something is on loan to you that is worth way more to me than a million dollars. And that's my daughter, Holly. And you need to take care of her. Then he mentioned that how he wasn't a violent man, but that if, that if, I, that, but that if I hurt his daughter, that I would feel his wrath. And I was like, oh, scared. I couldn't get to the airport quick enough. I was definitely nervous. But anyway, got to the airport, flew home. My parents picked me up. I told them the whole story. They laughed and laughed and laughed, but I didn't think it was funny. I, I didn't think it was funny at all. I was very upset. This was a challenging trip for me. In my mind, that trip couldn't have gone any worse. But you know what? I went back. Love for Holly caused me to go back, even in that, play, even that situation where I wasn't very comfortable. Love will cause us to do all kinds of crazy things. And in the same way that we will do almost anything in the name of love, people will do almost anything to fulfill their desire or need for love. Think about some of the stupid things you did in high school or when you were young or middle school just to fit in with a crowd or just to feel accepted. Every human has a need for love and acceptance. Just as our bodies have physical needs like food, water, and sleep, our souls have needs too. And when these needs are not met, people will do almost anything to fulfill them. So today I want to share with you needs of the human heart and how these needs are only truly fulfilled through our relationship with Christ. So seven needs of the human heart I'm going to share with you today. The first one is we need to feel heard and understood. We need to feel heard and understood. This is a desire to be known. We want to be understood and believed when we share our feelings and our thoughts. We, we all like people who listen to us and, help, and they feel safe by listening to us. When we don't feel that someone is listening, it can hurt our feelings. And we might say things like, you're not hearing me, or you just don't understand me, you're just not getting me. They might raise their voice believing that the other person is not listening. They might even interrupt them and repeat themselves again and again. Ultimately, some of us will get angry and we, when we don't feel like the person, that we are being heard and understood. Those who are not heard and understood growing up may struggle to find their voice. They may struggle to be able to speak about what they feel, need, or desire. Or they may talk a lot. It may it affects different people different ways. Number two, our need to be affirmed. Affirmations are about being noticed, appreciated, or thanked for things we've done. We all, we all like to be told, you're doing a great job, when someone even tells you 
thank you, that's giving you an affirmation. So when people tell you, good job, way to go, that was awesome, or thank you, those are examples of affirmation. When we don't get affirmation or affirmed, we may strive to please others by performing more and doing things perfectly. We might even try to please people in any way that we can. Some of you may have received anti-affirmation or criticism. You may have been told you'll never do it right or you're corrected for every time you do something. And if this, was, if this was the case, you may have given up trying altogether. Those who didn't get affirmed struggle to know if they ever got things right. Any criticism, however constructive, might take them back to guilty feelings of always being wrong. Even if complimented, they might struggle to believe it was sincere. The presence or absence of affirmations will help form our core beliefs in our lives. That's number two, our need to be affirmed. Number three, we need to be blessed. The desire, this desire sounds similar to our affirmations, but it's different. Affirmation is about what you do. Blessing is about who you are. To be blessed is to know that you are unconditionally loved. You are celebrated. A smile comes on the face of those who bless you when you enter the room. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to earn the blessing. You are just blessed to be in that relationship. You're just blessed because you are alive. A father may tell the son, I am just grateful that you are my son, that you were born. Now that is a blessing. You, all, you also may know the blessing when we make mistakes or really screw up and people continue to love us even though they may be disappointed with our behavior, they still love us anyway. There's also such a thing as anti-blessing. When we hear that we are no good or hopeless or unworthy. When we, could, when we confuse a desire to be affirmed with a desire to be blessed, we wind up thinking that the way to get blessed is to do things, do things well. And we try to earn a blessing or prove our value. The lack of blessing causes shame and constant need to find blessing. Example, the need for approval but it never seems to accomplish that desired result. Others are put off by our self-centeredness and our complaints. This has a very negative impact on our lives when we don't have the blessing. Another one, number four, is our need to feel safe. We all long to have uh, what we need to live safely in this world, including money to provide for our basic needs, good health, a place to live, and meaningful relationships. When we don't have those things, we can feel anxious. Growing up with a, a lack of safety creates feelings of fear and anxiety in the present. People get triggered by any perception on their part that things are not safe. Your perception here is the key, perceiving danger when there actually is no danger. Those who grow up in chaotic and unsafe homes may have developed a more acute sense of anxiety and may seek to control things about their environment in relationships in order to feel safe. If there are things in their life that they feel are out of control, you may probably, they will probably try a way to control something else to offset where they feel like they're out of control. Okay, that was number four, the need to feel safe. Number five, we need to be touched. Babies are born with a need to be touched. And when they don't receive enough human contact, they can develop a failure to thrive and may even stop growing. I don't think we ever outgrow this desire, and I think that many people walk around today that are touch deprived. Lack of healthy touch leads to chronic touch deprivation. When people who long for healthy touch relate to other people who do not touch, they will feel unloved and unsupported. So because they're not getting enough touch, they're gonna feel like they're unloved. Okay, even though you might love them with all your heart, if they're not touched enough, certain people are gonna feel like they're unloved. Number six, we need to be chosen. We need to feel chosen. Being chosen means that someone else has expressed a desire to be with us and only with us. We feel cherished and special. This could be a friend, but ultimately this is going to be a spouse. The desire to be chosen is a desi desire to be desired. We can all remember those childhood days when we talked with our best friends. We talked about having a best friend. We even may have had, the girls had the necklaces and half the heart one girl would wear and her best friend would wear the other half. Or friends become blood brothers or blood sisters. There was just unity, this chosen that you're my best friend. You are my best friend, that, that desire. 
Not being chosen leaves wounds of feeling unattractive and unlikable. People with such wounds constantly compare themselves to others. Anyone perceived to look or act better or achieve successful things will trigger unworthiness. They will also struggle to believe compliments. Historically, we have gone through great lengths to be attractive to other people. Why else would our cosmetic and plastic surgery industries be so popular? In 2018, Americans spent $16.5 billion on plastic surgery. Americans spend $33 billion every year on weight loss products. The average woman spends $313 a month on her appearance, while the average man spends about $244 a month. This is in America. These are stats. Not everybody does it. I don't do that, but this is an average. And for men, it'd be like facial moisturizers, gym memberships, hand cream, shaving products and supplements, all these types of things. Spending all this type of money to try to look good and appear good to other people so that we'll be liked. And ultimately, being chosen is about mate selection. We desire to be chosen by one person with whom we will spend the rest of our lives. This is a desire to be special and for exclusive, exclusivity. Number seven, we need to be included. This desire is related to the desire to be chosen, ex except uh, we desire to be chosen by a larger group. A desire to belong. Think about grade school and junior high school. Out on the playground, we wanted to play with the cool kids. When playing games, we wanted to be picked early and not last to be on a team. In the lunchroom where, the, where we had our lunch, we wanted to sit at the, cool, the, at the table with the cool kids, the in crowd. Then, of course, we go to high school and college and people want to be in the right clubs and organizations, fraternities and sororities. Later in life, people want to live in the right neighborhoods and communities, go to the right churches and socialize in the right circles. All of these things are connected to our need to be included. And we often struggle with the fear of missing out. This perfectly describes this desire to be included is the fear of missing out on something. Those not included as children may spend their adult lives constantly trying to fit in or avoid social situations altogether. Not being invited triggers feelings of pain. In the attempt to fit in, people will say yes when they mean no. For example, teens may drink at a party or some social gathering so they will fit in and feel accepted. For both desires, the need to be chosen and the need to be included, we can feel very anxious about loneliness and isolation. This anxiety will drive us to do and say things we will later regret, regret just so we can avoid the appearance of being left out. Now these are the seven needs of the soul. Our souls are born with needs. We have physical needs, spiritual needs, and soulish needs. Our soul has needs. The need to feel heard and understood. The need to feel affirmed. The need to feel, a ble feel blessed. The need to feel safe. The need to be touched the need to be chosen, and the need to be included. The problem is, with these seven desires and needs of our soul, they're so deep inside of us, we don't consciously know that they exist. And we feel them in our hearts, and we feel this aches and pain for them to be fulfilled, but we don't know the source of that pain. We often look to other relationships to fill us up and make us feel fulfilled, and it's not wrong, of course, uh, to expect un uh, fulfillment and happiness in our closest relationships, but we run into trouble when we ask those relationships to do too much. Our marriages suffer when we expect that our spouse can give us all the desires of our heart all of the time. Instead of realizing that we have pain and loneliness because our desires are being unfulfilled, we lead lives of loneliness and frustration, lives laced with anger and bitterness, we hurt and we long for something more, but we often don't even know that what, the, what the something more actually is. Well, this morning I want to tell you there is something more. It is Christ. And He is both the creator and the ultimate fulfillment of those desires. He put those desires in there and He also fulfills those desires. Only through Him will these needs be totally fulfilled. Let me show you this from Scripture how the Lord meets our soul needs. So the first one, our need to feel heard and understood. Psalm 139, 1 through 4, 4 says, Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. 
You perceive every movement of my heart and soul, and you understand my every thought before it even enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me. Lord, you read my heart like an open book. You know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. Amen. That's the Passion Translation. He hears us completely, and He knows us completely. Even before the words are on our lips, He knows it. He knows everything about us, all the good, the bad, and the ugly, and He still loves us. That is our need to be known, right there, our need to be, our need of our heart that He meets. Number two, our need to be affirmed. Colossians 2, 9 and 10 says, For in Him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him who is the head of all principality and power. You are complete in Him. You find, we find our completeness in Him and Him alone. I'm not saying we don't need family, we don't need relationships, but they're not going to fully fulfill all the needs of our heart. Only in Him are we fulfilled. We are complete in Him. Jeremiah 31.3 says this too, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. You are loved with an everlasting love, a love that will never end. In Hebrews 13, 5, the last part of the verse says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. God loves you and he wants to be with you. Number three, our need to be blessed. Ephesians 1, 3 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. In Romans 4, 7 and 8 says, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Amen. We are blessed because God doesn't count our sins against us. We are blessed because He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ. Everything we need, He's already provided for us. Amen. Number four, our need to feel safe. This was connected with money, provisions, and, and uh, just protections and things. Third John 1, 2, it said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. If you remember, our safety had to do with the meeting of our basic needs, our need for health, a place to live, money, and relationships. All of these things are included in this verse. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things you'd prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. As your soul is healthy and prospers, all these other things are going to be provided for you as well. You can be safe that God will provide for you. Proverbs 18.10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. God wants us to feel safe and loved. Amen. Our need for touch. You know, in the New Testament, you see Jesus touching the blind, the sick, the lame, lepers, widows, uh, the disciples, and huge crowds of people. People were often touching him and he was touching people all the time. Now on earth, the body, the church, is the hands and feet of Jesus. And he partners with us to, meet, to help meet the needs of people. The people need to be touched in a healthy way. And that's part of the church's job to do that. And in Hebrews 10, 24 and 25 says, And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as manner of some, or some are in the habit of doing, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see that day approaching. We need to be involved in healthy community, a community of believers that loves and supports one another, that rejoices with those who rejoice and mourns with those who mourn, who can hug our neck and encourage us that everything is going to be okay. You know, some of us have this in family, some of us do not. But even if you do have a healthy family that loves you and cherishes you and celebrates you, we still need to not forsake the gathered together saints together because that's where God's called us to be as a family, the body of Christ. Number six, our need to be chosen. John 15, 16 says, You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Amen. In Ephesians 1, 4, And in love He chose us before He laid the foundation of the universe. Because of His great love, He ordained us. 
so that we would be seen as holy in his eyes and in unsustained innocence. You didn't choose Jesus. He chose you in love before the foundations of the world were even made. He chose you. He adopted you. He loves you. He loves to be with you. He's not remembering your sins anymore. He's remembering you. He's remembering his love for you, and he wants to be with you and fellowship with you and grow heart to heart, closer connected with you. Amen. And our need to be included. Number seven, last one. Ephesians 1, 13. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. You were included in Christ. In Ephesians 1, 5 and 6 says, Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of the glory of His grace by which He made us accepted in the Beloved. Amen. We are included in Christ and we are accepted in the Beloved of God. God is the only one who can fulfill all the needs of the human heart, all of our soul needs. Our desires are fulfilled through Him. We believe by faith that God hears us and understands us and He has known us before we were even in our mother's wombs. We know that God affirms us and blesses us. God promises to keep us safe. God directs us to be in healthy communities and be touched in healthy ways with family and, and the church. God shows us to, to, by sending us His one and only Son to die for our sins. And finally, God wants to include us in His kingdom forever. Forever. This is love. And God demonstrated His own love towards us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God has given us everything we need for life and godliness. So in your life, if you didn't receive some of these seven needs of your soul from your family, make a list. Recognize these triggers that upset you. Then trace it back to which needs of the soul were not met in your, through your family. Then meditate on the scriptures I shared, maybe other scriptures, that, uh, so the, desire, the desired need that you have to be loved and accepted. Meditate on those scriptures to fulfill that desired need to be loved and accepted. Amen. Amen. I shared a lot of information with you guys there. I know it. I only have a 30-minute window there. But you may need to go back and listen to this again. You can go to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash C slash Discipling Nations. You can see it on our Facebook page as well. I'll have that on the screen for you. Go back and listen again and and listen to those seven needs for your soul that need to be fulfilled. If they weren't fulfilled, go back and look at areas in your life where you're being triggered and somebody says something to you and why and see if it's why you're being triggered, why you're being upset. God wants your soul to prosper. He wants you to be in health to the degree that your soul prospers. And as you get these seven needs of your heart fulfilled through Christ, you're going to be more and more healthy to love people in a greater way to love yourself in a greater way, to love your neighbor in a greater way, to love the church, and to receive and give love to God as well. We can't receive love from God when we think He's mad at us and He wants to punish us. He's angry all the time. We receive love from God when we know He's our Father. He has good things in store for us. He wants to do good to us. He wants to do good, not evil. He's already taken care of the sin issue. He's already taken care of the sin problem. He wants to now have fellowship with you, with you relationship with you. He wants to you to be one spirit with him, one with him in spirit. Amen. He was joined himself to the Lord as one spirit with him. God wants to have communion with you. God wants to have fellowship with you. He wants you to be known and to be, to be, to him to be known, to be fully known in you and with you so you can know the love of the Father that surpasses your knowledge, that surpasses your experience growing up, that surpasses surpasses your church experience or life experiences, that surpasses knowledge. He wants you to experience the love of the Father today. I'm going to pray for you to experience that right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray you'd use this message to touch hearts, heal hearts, and for people to receive the love you have for them. God so loved the world, He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but everlasting life. You love them. I pray you bless them and touch them today in Jesus' name. Guys, I thank you for watching. Tell your friends and family. Join us again next week as we continue sharing about the love of God. I love you guys. God bless you. We hope you enjoyed today's message. If you have any questions or would like prayer, 
please contact us by calling the number on the screen or email us at disciplingnations at plumtreechurch.com.